All right, moment of truth. Does it fit? It's gotta. Uh, it is not just any lamp. It is an Art Deco lamp from the 1920s. It was such a weird experience. Ta-da! Nice. Out of here. Hello friends and welcome back to my Victorian duplex here in Nova Scotia. I'm Shannon Makes, renovation soldier by day, circus artist by night. And this is episode five of my ongoing attempt to reinstore and revigorate this lovely old house. If you remember from the end of last week's video, we had the water all set up downstairs and ready to connect to our shower. Well, while we were there, we also decided to run some temporary lines for the washer so that we could occasionally have clean clothes to go with our clean bodies. That's why you saw us cutting all those holes in the wall last week. But that does mean bringing the washer from its upstairs location in the bathroom to the downstairs closet right next to the shower. And let me say, nothing wakes you up faster than lugging heavy machinery down centuries old flights of stairs. I think we're gonna have to take off the door. All right, moment of truth. Does it fit? It's gotta. So a quick note on these moving straps because they made their debut on this channel in the second episode when we we're gonna move the water heater downstairs. And a few keen-eyed viewers giggled about the fact that I showed the straps in some detail, but then we didn't actually use them to move the water heater. And all I have to say is y'all have some keen eyes because I honestly didn't even notice that when I was editing it, but you're completely right. Turns out that smooth, slippery, cylindrical objects are just not the best candidate for moving straps, but they work super well on less round objects like say dryers. Although I will say I do need to shorten them a little bit. I need to sew a few more slots because they were clearly manufactured with taller people, probably men in mind. Next, while Phil worked on getting the shower hooked up once and for all, I left to run a fun little errand. All right, so I am on the way to pick up a lamp that I found on Marketplace. Uh, it is not just any lamp, it is an Art Deco lamp from the 1920s, which honestly is just gonna fit so well with all of the other Art Deco style hardware that I've got going on in the house. Got a really good deal from it. Oh, thank you. Got a really good deal on it and it was such a weird experience. I wrote the woman, she was selling this lamp as one of three, so there was the lamp I would like, and then there was a pair, and she was selling all three for $100. So I wrote her and I said, uh, is there any way you'd let just the, the one go for a, a separate price? What would you like for it? And she said, no, I'm, I wanna sell all three as a lot. And I said, okay, thank you. That was it, that was fine for me, and then not, 20 seconds later, she kind of came back and was like, well, actually, <laughs> she said, well, actually, I'll consider selling just the one. What would you like to pay for it? What would you offer for it? So I said, well, you know, it's one third of the lot and I'm not breaking up the pair. You'll still have the matching pair. So I was thinking roughly a third of the original asking price. So, you know, something like 35 to which her response was, ha. So I thought, oh, okay, she's insulted. She doesn't want to take my offer. She's not going to give it to me. So I just left it at that. And once again, within 20 seconds, got another response from her saying, well, actually, okay. <laughs> I'd rather see it get used, sold and used than not sold at all. So fine, $35 it is. So I'm going to go pick up this lamp for $35. So uh, yeah, let's go. Ta-da! 
there she is oh super super cute the woman was really nice turns out she was also from montreal she actually lives used to live very close to where we live in montreal um and fun fact it is rewired for North American plugs, which is really fun. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's got the most lovely patina. I'll show you some close-ups when we get back home, but I'm super excited. Best $35 I've spent so far. All right, let's get home and uh, do something fun with this guy. Maybe give you a closer look. We have a lot of heavy cast iron radiators in the house that will eventually need to be moved out so we decided to save some time and our backs and build a dolly to help us move them around. Out of recycled wood from the basement, of course. We started with this radiator because Phil had to go back to Montreal in a couple days and while he was gone I wanted to start cleaning up the bedroom but you know I didn't feel like trying to move a cast iron radiator all by myself. This was the first radiator that we pulled out, but it definitely set a trend of revealing old wallpaper shards hidden behind its fins. Wow. Is that just raw plaster underneath it? I think it I is. Think so. Although, here's some texture. Huh. That might have been the original wallpaper. Cute. So now would be a great time to ask if anybody out there in my vast viewership is or knows of historic wallpaper experts that I can talk to because like I said, this has been a recurring theme in this house. You're only a few episodes in and already you've seen a couple different wallpapers, not to mention that I'm several months ahead of you in reality and spoiler, I found a bit more and I would absolutely love to get an estimate on when some of these date to. Although I realize it's probably not an exact science because I imagine that wallpaper fashion, kind of like other various historical fashions, is cyclical and that these wallpaper samples could potentially match up with a few different eras as they kind of come back into fashion. That's not to mention that it's also been really hard to tell sometimes if a wallpaper is the original wallpaper for that wall or if it's just, you know, the most resilient layer and has destroyed or consumed previous wallpapers. I'm basically left to guess eras and time frames based purely on the aesthetics and art style, which that's that's definitely not my forte. This, for example, doesn't strike me as original to the house, which was built in 1902 and would have been more Art Nouveau style. So think undulating asymmetrical lines, organic shapes and curves and botanicals. Think that muha print in my sewing room. This to me reads as maybe more 30s, possibly 40s to me, but Again, I'm no expert, so definitely weigh in if you think you know when this dates to or if you have sources that I could turn to to research it. Also, if anyone out there has experience trying to remove historic wallpaper samples while preserving them, please let me know. Shoot me your tips and tricks down in the comments beyond, you know, the common sense precautions of masking, wearing gloves, washing your hands, all that, because I do know that antique wallpaper adhesives can be nasty stuff, but be sure to let me know because I do have a few areas in the house where I've revealed some historic wallpaper and then just kind of left the wall halfway unfinished uh, in hopes of finding a better removal technique that doesn't destroy the wallpaper in the process. 
process because I would love to save them all, to frame them, eventually make a nice gallery wall of all the wallpapers that we find in the process of renovating this house. But at the moment, it's proving tricky to get them off the wall without destroying them. But for now, moving from walls to ceilings, because the next thing on the list was to temporarily secure some crumbling plaster on one of our ceilings. And that has led to an absolutely iconic click from the channel. So please enjoy it in its fullest. The goal is to spread it a little. Now it's just to prevent it from getting worse. Every start where it's less, uh, like in this corner here, That. Now I know this isn't proper plaster technique. I do know how to repair plaster and I'm prepared to do a ton of it in this house, but that wasn't my goal. I didn't want to drag out all the supplies and the eight foot scaffolding and mess up one of the only clean rooms in the house. I just wanted to make sure that a chunk of plaster didn't come crashing down on our heads as we ate dinner, which it definitely looked like it was threatening to do. That's a definite improvement. That'll do it for now. Not too bad. Not great, but not too bad. So our neighbor, the one who lives right next door to us, he's the one who actually gave us the chainsaw and all the help cutting down the trees yesterday around the property. He just swung by this evening with a replacement blade for the chainsaw so that we could finish chopping everything up, which in and of itself is absolutely just so sweet. I absolutely love it. He's so, so nice. But Phil decided to give him a tour of the house because he's never actually seen the interior, just the exterior. So Phil's in there right now giving him a tour. In the meantime, I have been loading some of the good wood and molding from the basement and the attic. We've been storing it here on the table. I've been moving it inside because it looks like it's gonna rain and I don't want it to get wet. And every time I go into the house, I can just hear Tim ooing and eyeing and just a whole wide range of exclamations about our house and things that he's finding and it's absolutely adorable. I love listening to other people discover our house and get excited about it in the same way that I am. So I thought if we were really quiet, we could probably get a little sneak peek, just show you guys, give you a little listen because it's hilarious and it's absolutely adorable. So if we're really quiet here, that we can listen to Tim. Oh my lord. And I found some tape for him. So we gotta dive in. You found some tape for this in the, in the house? Yeah. We're coming to Cavern of Wonders. Oh, is this the attic? Yes. Holy mother. I see what you mean. It's full. No, it's definitely 40s and 50s, right? Oh, you guys will just have a field day with this stuff. That's why I become millionaire. Ah, there you go, hockey carriage. That's what you mean. You never know. Hockey carriage, you can find an old Gretzky one. Yeah. Oh, what is that? It looks like a base of a table. Like it looks like a hospital table. You know, like a dentist yeah. office or something. It has a lens in there. Either kaleidoscope, you know? Yeah. Oh, no, it's a it's a parrot thing. See, it's the Oh my lord. It's a long uh, it like, is. It's a sight. <laughs> That's funny as hell. You guys are gonna have to open up like a like a uh, Yeah, a little antique shop. Well not only that, it's a, a website. Just take pictures of all this stuff. Every one of them twenty five dollars. <laughs> Hands down twenty five dollars. <laughs> boom 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 boom. They go on like a heartbeat. So something else happened that day that I didn't film in real time because I didn't realize it was happening until Phil told me about it later, but it is relevant to the history of the house and also to future episodes. So I'm gonna mention it now, just plant the seeds so you have context for it later. And basically Phil had gone outside to take some drone shots of the house, try and get some footage of what it looked like before we cut all the trees down, you know, get that nice before after montage. And while he was in the middle of doing that, he got a surprise visit from the owner of the house immediately next to us, which 
it's neighbor Tim's house, except that Tim is actually renting it from someone. And that someone turns out to be basically the largest developer in the area. Now, why was one of the largest developers in the area swinging by for a visit? Neighborly small town curiosity in part, but also with a vested interest, so to speak, because it turns out that he also put a bid on this house. Now, if you know anything about large developers, it probably comes as no surprise to learn that he bid basically rock bottom on it. He kind of offered basically the price of the land and no more because his intentions, if I had to guess, because he didn't actually state it, but his intentions were almost definitely to tear this house down too, to level it to the ground and to build new construction on it new construction, pretty much exactly like the one that Tim lives in, which I mean, it is very serviceable and practical in its own way, but it also has absolutely zero charm or history. And it wouldn't even actually house any more people than this current duplex if you would just fix up both sides so that two families could live in them. In fact, arguably it could fit even more because this house is much bigger than Tim's. So anyway, that got me all fired up because prior to that moment, I had kind of had a feeling that buying this house was gonna be the only way to save it from demolition, but it was like a hypothetical demolition. You know, I figured that it was so far gone that most people probably wouldn't bother with it. And trust me, the comments on my house tour video have definitely confirmed that, but it was just kind of a theoretical feeling. Now. I knew basically for a fact that I probably just saved this house and this piece of history. And it also got me really wondering what was there on the lot next to us before he got his hands on it? Like, was it another grand Victorian mansion like ours that he just raised to the ground to build Tim's house? I don't know. It got my curiosity all fired up and I really wanted to know. So Phil and I are going to take some time in a future episode, probably next week. We're going to go back in the Google map time machine and we're going to see if we can learn what was on Tim's lot before Tim's current house was built. But that's enough speculation for now. Let's get to some demolition. <laughs> As you can probably tell, the dumpster was rapidly filling up and we weren't actually allowed to fill it past the level of the top of the dumpster. So we had to start breaking down wood into the smallest pieces possible just to make sure that we could cram everything in there but that it wouldn't exceed the top of the dumpster. The enthusiasm for defenestration and window yeeting related merch continues because I had a couple lovely designs submitted by enthusiastic viewers that I really just wanted to share with y'all because I know I can gripe about the keyboard warriors and the anonymous asshats of the internet every now and then, but honestly, the vast majority of you are absolutely lovely and you've offered your support and services and words of encouragement. And then a couple of you took the time out of your day to create some fantastic designs. So I just want to share it and celebrate the positive side of this community as well, because these designs are stinking cute. So the first one comes from Malia J who sent me this design on Instagram. And I love that this makes me instantly think of the doors of Durin. Speak friend and enter. Speak friend and enter, which I feel like I need to have hung not only above the doors to this house, but also <laughs> metaphorically to this channel. Speak friend and enter, speak snark and you're gonna get called out. <laughs> One of my patrons also said that they loved this design because it could be considered a threat, which 
definitely also gave me a good giggle. Watch out or it'll be the defenestration station for you. Then this next one is from patron member Kristen P and I love the inclusion of the corgi which she snagged from the raw footage and I know that a couple of you caught it too because you mentioned it in the comments. It was completely unplanned but it was just serendipitous timing that there was a curious corgi in the window as I went to shoot that footage and so I left it in and now it's made its way into this artwork which is absolutely adorable. Now, I probably won't use either of these as official merch designs, but I just thought it was a fantastic jumping off point for my own inspiration. And I just love the artsy enthusiasm that these viewers had for the project. So I wanted to share it with you. And also just thank you all for being here, watching the videos, supporting the channel with your time and your kind words and your encouragement. And also a quick note, if you are a graphic artist and you're interested in working with me to design some actual merch, please shoot me an email. I would definitely love to design it myself. It is something I enjoy doing, but I'm also very short on time these days. So now that it's raining, we can see what's happening with the gutter situation. So lots of water coming out here creating all the damage and also the general roof just splatters like crazy right here it's probably what rotted this year so we need gutters so we've got water outside the house which means we also have water inside of the house because of our lacking gutters and our leaking foundation but we also have water inside the house in a good way because Phil, hero of the hour, did finish hooking up the shower. So we were able to have our first shower in the house all week. And let me tell you, it was absolutely amazing. I just want you all, the next time you take a warm shower or a hot bath, to pause and really truly appreciate the wonder that is hot water at the turn of a handle. The wonders of indoor plumbing. So we're making good progress here. We got the washer hooked up, we got the shower connected, we got our first radiator out and we exposed our second antique wallpaper. And we'll continue exposing more things like hopefully our foundation in next week's video as we keep chipping away at those nasty trees around our house. Let's make a cup of coffee and go see how much water is in the basement. Airflow. I definitely see a few layers that look like wood. So Phil and I are potentially two of the only people to go to the dump and leave with more stuff in the car than when we arrived. First, I think you need to show the good folks your pajama pants. Fa la 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 dum dum dum. Space, Ewoks, Star Wars, <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> terrible, terrible video footage.